Hi everyone, welcome back to the Civ Razor Move. What I'm going to be doing in this video is taking a second look at that NeoPixel ring. The last time we looked at it, we saw it wasn't quite working properly. Four of the pixels didn't seem to light up. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is trying to diagnose that problem and hopefully try and solve it. But before I can do that, I need to just complete the wiring a little bit and set up a separate power supply for this NeoPixel ring. So let's get into it. So what I'm doing here is just rigging up a power supply for the NeoPixel ring. Got uh, another little buck converter here and what I've done is I've taken the input a couple of wires off on to feed into the input and I've taken uh, the feed, the yellow one, in from one of my green switches and then I've just uh, stolen a, a negative return wire off uh, one of the existing black connections on the switches and you can see that we've got a little red light here on the output now if I measure that just check the voltage I've got our voltmeter here and we should see, if I get the leads around the right way, it's actually given us 11.75 volts, which is way too high. We want that to be down at 5 volts for the NeoPixel. So what I need to do is just turn this trim pot here, probably anti-clockwise I would guess. Unfortunately I haven't got enough hands to actually do it whilst the uh, meter is connected so we'll just turn it back a bit and check it again. Put that down on the meter so that you can see that. Didn't seem to move at all, did it? Okay, so that was a bit fiddly, but we got there in the end. I got my son to help me with the trim pot, and you should see we've got exactly five volts now. And then what I've done here is I've connected up the output, the white and black wires here, and I've taken them into the uh, power supply input of my circuit board here. Um, the black one's going to the common ground in the centre, and then the white one is our 5 volt feed into the NeoPixel um, on the end here. Now if I turn on this power switch, can't really see too much on the video but I can see some sort of lights flickering around here so if we go around the other side of the robot you can actually see again it's not great on the video but it looks really good to me um, the NeoPixel is in some kind of animation spinning around kind of like a fan spinning around but different colours taken the plate off the front and I think it shows up a little better on the video it, it doesn't really demonstrate the pattern as well but um, you can actually see the lights are operating and I actually thought that um, all of the lights were working but now I've opened it up I can see again only 12 out of the 16 lights are actually operating so I'm beginning to wonder if the NeoPixel itself is damaged in some way or if there's some problem from stopping those last four lights from lighting up. So I've been playing around with a Python sketch here to try things out and I'll just go through it sort of line by line. So you can see the first thing I'm doing here is setting up 
a variable called nanoport and assigning it the value com13 that's just my com port your number might be different the next thing i'm doing is starting an arduino service with runtime.start and i'm naming the service nano then i'm doing this nano.setboardnano now i don't know if that makes any difference I'm just trying to tell it that the type of board that we're using is a Nano as opposed to something like a Mega or an Uno. And then next I'm doing nano.connect to Nano port which is just connecting the Arduino to the COM port. Then I'm starting up a NeoPixel service with runtime.start and we're just going to call that NeoPixel. Then I'm doing neopixel.attach Now we've got three parameters here. The first is the Arduino, which I called Nano. Second argument is the pin number. I'm using pin number three. You might be doing something different. And then the third argument is the number of pixels. I have 16 pixels, so that's what I've set it to. Now this next section here is a little messy. I was just playing around with some different animations by uncommenting the lines but you can see I've got the animation set to color wipe. And if we go down a bit, you can see I've got this variable called speed, which I'm setting to one. Now the animation speeds, I believe one is the fastest speed and then two would be half of that speed. And I'm not sure then whether three or four is or half the speed again, but basically, the speed of one is the fastest and as the numbers get higher the animation gets slower. Next I'm doing NeoPixel.setAnimation. Um, we've got five arguments here. The first argument is the name of the animation. So I'm just going to be setting that to color wipe. Then the next three arguments are the R, G and B for red, green and blue. So I'm setting the red to 255, so that's full red, and then no blue and no green. So that should be setting the pixels to be red. And then the last variable, the last parameter, is the speed. I've just got a print statement there so that I can see the animation has started. And then I'm going to do a sleep 5. That's just going to run the animation for 5 seconds. So the next thing I'm doing is just playing around with a couple of loops. Um, the first loop there is just to turn all the pixels off. So we've got for pixel in range one comma neopixel dot num pixels. So that's just a loop looping between the numbers one and sixteen, which is how many pixels we've got. And then you can see I'm doing neopixel dot set pixel with three arguments, the first argument being the uh, pixel number so let's see it's going to be 1 through to 16 as we go through the loop and then the next three arguments are the RGB and I've set them all to 0 so that's going to be effectively be black which means the pixels turned off and then you can see after the loop is finished we're doing neopixel.write matrix so we're actually just during the loop just setting up the colors of the pixels and then we don't do any writing until the end so we should see all the pixels switch off at the same time. Now in the next loop I'm doing things slightly differently we've got the same range so we've got for pixel in range one comma neo pixel dot num pixels which again is looping through one through to sixteen um, but this time we're setting each pixel uh, to red you can see the second argument is 255 so that's full red and then we're writing the matrix inside the loop so the pixels are going to light uh, one at a time and then you can see I've got sleep one just to give a little bit of time in between each one or not all of that is inside the loop and then finally I'm just doing print done just to let myself know that this script has finished okay so I'll run that and show you what happens so we can see it's doing the color wipe. Now it should be lighting each pixel red one at a time uh, at one second intervals. If you look carefully you'll see that the colors are not all red and sometimes instead of lighting the next pixel it just makes the current one brighter. 
So I think somewhere we're losing some bits in the data, which is why we're never able to reach the end. Um, now, I'm suspecting it could be some kind of hardware issue. I think the Arduino talks to the NeoPixel at a certain frequency and maybe there's something slightly off there and it's sort of like a timing issue. Anyway, that's what's happening. So I had a look at the timing and I don't believe it is a timing problem. It really seems to me like we're not sending enough bits of data. So I pulled up the information on the NeoPixel that I'd purchased and I noticed it's described as this RGBW. So I think there is an extra channel there for the white. Now what it says here is, what is better than smart RGB LEDs? Smart RGB plus white. So I think there is a white channel. And then it goes on to say here, the NeoPixel is split. One half is the RGB you know and love. The other half is a white LED with a yellow phosphor. Now I think if you look at them here, I think what they're talking about is this half is um, the RGB half and then this yellow half is the white LED with the yellow phosphor. And then finally it says here 8 times 4 channels, 32 bit colour overall. So I believe we need to be sending 32 bits of data for each pixel. Now I don't believe the my robot lab supports that so what i'm going to do is take a look at the mrl com sketch and see if we can modify it a bit to send that extra eight bits of data so it will support this rgbw version of the neopixel ring so let's take a look at that so if we go into the my robot lab folder and open up the resource folder in there we should find a folder called Arduino and in there a folder called MRLCOM and in here we should find the MRLCOM.ino file now that's the Arduino sketch that runs on the Arduino so if we open that up we should see it opens up our Arduino IDE where we can edit that sketch now in here we can see that this sketch is actually made up of lots of other files and the two that we're interested in is the mrlneopixel.cpp and mrlneopixel.h So if we start with the .h file, this is like a, a C++ header file if we scroll down a bit we'll find this struct called pixel Now in here you'll see we've got three unsigned chars for red, blue and green and I've added in this extra one for white so that just gives us somewhere to put the data for the white channel. So then we're done with this file so if we go and then have a look at the um, .cpp file And in here you'll see we've got this line here, pixel, pixel. Now that to me looks like a constructor. Now that might not be the right terminology. My C++ is very rusty. I'm not too familiar with this. But this looks like what happens when you create a new pixel. And you'll see it calls this clear pixel function. Now that's right below it just here, pixel, clear pixel. And again here I've just added in this white equals zero. So not only are we setting the red blue and green to zero we're also setting the white to zero so whenever we create a new pixel it will automatically have the white set to zero now we're not actually going to use the white and we, we can't control that from my robot lab it'll always remain zero but I've done it like this because maybe in the future we will be able to control it now the only other thing we need to do is to make sure that that data gets sent when the uh, pixel is sent to the hardware so we have to scroll down quite a bit to find the function that we're looking for. And we're actually looking for where it's sent. Now we've got this send byte, but 
but that's not the actual function we need to modify. The one we want is the one below it, which is called send pixel, which is here. And we'll see that's where the actual pixel struct is sent. So you can see as well as sending green, red and blue, we're also sending the data for white. And that's all we need to do. That th This one line here is really all we needed to do. We could have just sent the zeros right here. So the only other thing we need to do is to actually upload this to the Arduino. So if we just go into the tools menu, uh, we just need to make sure that our board is set to a nano. As you can see here that it is. And also, um, my board is a slightly older board and it's not a genuine board. Um, and I seem to need to use this old bootloader. Um, I think that's just because my board is not a genuine board and maybe it's just based on an older version. Now you might need any one of these three, but I needed the old bootloader. And then finally we just need to make sure the port is set correctly. Now when I plug in my Nano I get COM port 13, you'll probably get something different. And then finally we just need to click the upload button and that will actually compile and upload this modified sketch onto our Arduino Nano. Okay, so let's take a look and see if that made any difference. Ah yes, that's much better. You can now see that all the pixels are working and they're all the correct colour. They are actually a nice bright red colour, although they don't show it on the video very well. They are nice bright red. This is slowing things down a bit so we can see what's happening and we can see that every pixel is now working and they're now the right colour. So sending that extra byte made all the difference. So I'm really pleased with that, we solved the problem. Okay, so I'm really pleased with that. Finally solved that problem, that little mystery. Um, sending that extra byte was all that we needed to do. So it was really just understanding that the NeoPixel ring that I had was an RGBW version and not just an RGB. And as such, it requires an extra byte of data. And as standard, my robot lab doesn't seem to support that. Uh, certainly not on the version of my robot lab that I'm running. But I was able to hack the MRLcom and sort that out. So uh, hopefully, maybe in the future, my robot lab will be able to support that out of the box. Now we understand the issue. So as usual, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Really do appreciate it if you can subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And I'll see you next time.